Hello and welcome to this week's Hashtag Toe to Toe. I'm Andy Scott. I'm joined by The Knowledge, Spencer Fearon, and I'm very, very, very happy to say that we are joined by Commonwealth Super Heavyweight Champion, Fraser Clark. That's look at this, big, everyone. Look big. at it's mad, this. Right? It's mad. The champ is Have here. Have you seen his chips already? Very, no oh, chips. No. There's no chips in that, man. It's smooth. It's nice. <laughs> Fraser, welcome home and congratulations. Just nice. uh, try and put into words how it's been. Oh, do you know what it is? It's like, it's a bit surreal because I've worked a long time for moments like this, you know what I mean? And I've seen, I've seen other people have their moments and it's just, it's just nice, you know, to find out mine. Um, it's just one of many, I'm hoping, but I like it, so I want some more of these, you know what I mean? Can we have a look at them? Can you take yeah, it off course. so we can have a quick look at of it course. and show everyone? Uh, you mentioned it there about the hard times. For people that don't know what you've been through in the last, I don't know, 24 months, yeah. can you quickly sort of, you know, without doing it down, but yeah, sum it just, up, the, the injuries, um, the... I think, I think you know, injuries is, is the biggest part and injuries for an athlete, it's one of the worst things. You go through injuries and it quickly moves to, you know, a state of sort of de depression because you can't do what you enjoy doing. It's all I know doing. It's just, I don't do nothing else. All I do really is box, train. Um, and when you can't do it, I mean, it's taken away from you. I didn't realise at the beginning of the injury how much I would be affected come midway through being injured. Um, difficult, you know, you have to, it's mad. You know, people say you need good people around you. Mm -hmm. You realise when the chips are down, how important them people are, you know, to have around you. It was, it was, I have to say thank you, to, you know, to all the staff at GB Boxing, friends and family, support staff, medical staff, because without them, like, I, I might have just, you know, chucked in the towel. Spencer, impressed with what you saw from Fraser? Yeah, in, amazingly uh, impressed, but the, the major thing is this, is like, I remember when Fraser came in here um, and he told us his aspirations when he came on last time, he said, this is about a year and a half ago. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So to see that, and he's a shine to, to me, and that's like a role model. Guys, you should be using this. Uh, like young, young kids who, who want something, persistence. Do you know what I mean? There was like, AJ came through, then Joel Joyce came through, and they were saying, well, Fraser Clark. Him, Fraser Clark and Joel Joyce used to fight every week, it seems like. <laughs> yeah. you know I mean? It's like every week That's these still guys. That's the best ABA final that we've covered on uh, the screen. That yeah. was an incredible ABA final, right? And, and you've just shown like persistence because it's still there. So if this gold medal is testimony of hard work, dedication, mm -hmm. and self belief. So I, I commend you, man, trust me. Yeah. It could happen to a nicer guy as well. Yeah, yeah. I think you know what it is about as well. You have to, like, um, I think everyone's allotted a time frame, do you know what I mean? And, I just think mine's coming now, you know, now is the time. I think, obviously, Joe had his time, Joshua had his time. Um, a lot of people, you know, feel like they need to rush. I don't think there's, like, this game's about, like you say, persistence, yeah. get it right, do your apprenticeship, you know, cover all them, everything you need to cover, and then when the time's right, you know, you, you yeah. blossom, sort Brilliant. of. Brilliant, well, well said. Um, we've had some tweets sent in for you from the public. Yeah. Dean AVFC, I'm guessing that's Aston Villa. If it's not, I apologise. What's it like sparring Anthony Joshua, and have you ever got the better of him? That's a, I mean, pe people must ask you about that on a daily basis. Yeah, I do get asked that all the time. Sparring, sparring, you know, it's competitive. Um, I have days where, where I'm, I'm, not, I'm bad and Joshua has the upper hand. He has bad days, I have the upper hand, and, but it's always very competitive and it's controlled. It's not stupid, we're not in there trying to kill each other. Don't get me wrong, it gets heated and, and you know, there's no punches pulled because we want to get the best out of each other. But, um, yeah, that's the, I suppose I have my good days, he had his bad days, his bad days, simple as that, but um, there's never, it's never stupid sparring, it's always clever, controlled, you know, we're just trying to improve each other. Someone you know very well, Daniel Dubois, mm. um, a lot of rumours that he got the better of Anthony Joshua by dropping him in sparring. Were you there for that? Can you, can you give us an exclusive? Did it happen? Did it not happen? I can confirm. I've been there for most, most sparring sessions and I've never seen it with my eyes. I've been in the gym or around the gym and I've never seen it. Don't get me wrong, it's sparring. People take big shots, you know, and I've seen him take a big shot off Daniel. I've seen him give Daniel a big shot. We all take big shots. We all give big shots. Uh, but it's controlled, like I say, you know, we've got big gloves on, um, head guards. This isn't, it's, it's not no brownie points for who got the bigger shot on who or who put who down. Sparring, sparring, different mm. to fight. So do you think it's all a, a rumour? Do you think it happened? No, it didn't happen. Right. It didn't happen. Simple and, as that. And, and may I just add to this? So who would you say is the greatest fighter of all time? I like Sugar Ray Robinson. As the Thank you very time, much. You mentioned Sugar Ray Robinson. Sugar Ray Robinson in 1951 when he was world middleweight champion, there was a man called Henry... Uh, Hardwick, right? Herbert Lewis Hardwick, who was a really good fighter, called the Coco Kid, right? The murderer's role. Allegedly knocked out Ray Robinson inspiring. 
He wasn't we, in the gym, which right. I'm sure, wasn't he? No, he wasn't. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say to you, it doesn't matter. Lennox Lewis, Galotta used to give him nightmares. It doesn't matter when they fought, what happened? So I'm saying people, people like to look on sparring is sparring. Sparring is, you don't get paid for sparring. Well, you get paid, but I'm saying you don't really make your living from sparring, right? So leave it as whatever happened. I don't. That doesn't bother me. Wow, wow, we. So what if that happened? Do you know what I mean? We just like talking about it. Like, yeah, I know you do. Remember when the, the rumor was Lawrence Acoli, um, um had AJ over? Yeah. AJ was the one that was pumping it out to say, yeah, he, he had me over in sparring. He had me over in sparring. And then what happens when he turns pro? AJ signs him. Come on, man. Sparring, sparring. Yeah, for real. For real. Uh, I mean, but if I knock Jack in sparring, I'm telling everybody. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. I'll, be, no I'll be having t-shirts made. <laughs> uh, one from Matt C here. Uh, let's go to you, Spence, on this one. Has Amir Khan got to do more than just win on Saturday? Man, of course he has to. You know what? You haven't, you haven't fought in this country for, what's it, like five years mm -hmm. or so? You, um, last time you did fight... Two um, years ago. Right, it was two years ago. Right, we're still trying to hype up for there's some big fight still there for Amir Khan. If he's going to still stay at 147, but maybe I could see Amir Khan must be doing the same thing as Carl Brook and fighting as a super welterweight. Of course, he's going to have to impress. All oh, listen, you're signed to the, now. You're you're over here. You're with Eddie Hearn right now. You you've got all the when Sky be, when Sky promotes something. Let's just be real now, right? It's not us bigging up where we're at. But it does help, right? But I'm saying to you, when Sky get behind something, they, they can pump something on another level. They are pumping behind Amir Khan. Amir Khan, in favour, in return, has to go out and perform amiably and put in a dazzling display. He has to. That is the, I don't want to hear nothing else. You have to go put that in. I reckon that even if we weren't on board, he would have to deliver a big performance. But it's a good, some good plug in there, uh, Spencer. That's right. Um, New contract. <laughs> <laughs> Harry94, um, Fraser, do you think waiting for the Tokyo Olympics could hamper your professional ambitions? No, not at all. I think all I think it can do is, is add to me because if I was in the gym and I was getting worse, I'd understand, but I'm getting better all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm surrounded by good people, I'm surrounded by good fighters, good coaches. Um, and another thing, with, I'm surrounded by a lot of hungry fighters. All them lads that are aiming for Tokyo, you've never seen a, a hungry bunch of kids, a hungry, hungry bunch of men, women in there every day. It's competition in there every single day. And I like to be around that. Even AJ comes and trains with us you know, for his camps. I think one of the main reasons being, he likes being around people who are hungry and driven. Um, so I think in two years, I'm just going to keep adding to what I've already got. I'm going to improve. And to be fair, like people, people use that term professional. There's nothing, there's nothing at all now that's telling me that I'm not a professional. No, the lines are blurred, aren't they? Yeah, Very I, close I'm now. professional in every, every sense of the word. Um, train three times a day, five days a week. I leave my family, leave my friends, and I go away to camp. Um, if, if that's not professional boxing or there's nothing professional about that, then I don't know what is. So I think, if anything, I'm getting better all the time. I'm maturing now, um, I'm learning all the time. So in two years' time, I'm going to go in. I'm just going to go into the pros at a better level than I already am. Yeah. Okay. Good answer. Um, I'll go straight back to you with this one, but Spencer, you can have a crack at this one second. Since you faced AJ many times, what style beats him or styles beats him? I think Hay causes him problems. That's from Super, Super Frankie Lampard, who's tweeted in before. Discuss. That is a good question. I think he's right. I think someone with David Hay's attributes is always going to be a problem for a bigger heavyweight speed mobile mobile good movement um i think you know that i think that would definitely do you see joseph parker the joseph parker fight i think um i won't say it was a blueprint to beat aj because obviously he didn't win but he had success at times um the movement the speed and um you know i think you have to change it up if you stand there and you want to trade with aj Nine times out of ten, you're going to come off, you know, worst off. There's not many people that can stand there and trade with him. Speed, movement, I think them attributes. And you've got to be clever as well. You, what people forget is this guy was Olympic champion. You know, he, he's, he's faced a lot of styles, mm. you know, throughout his career. It's only a short career, but he's faced a lot of styles. And I think when it comes on top and when it comes down to it, even in that Parker fight, I think he had to go back to, you know, to, in his memory and think, you know what? I've never boxed anyone as a pro yet that's moved so much and has come at me so fast. I'm going to have to go back to some of them amateur days, some of them contests that I boxed, you know, Cubans and whoever else, whoever else in different countries. I'm going to have to take a bit of that knowledge, bring it forward and use it. I think he did that against Parker. I'm surprised that that tweet didn't have Hay replaced by Fury, uh, just because the, the Mac is back. Yeah, the Mac is back. Um, I think that Tyson Fury could quit anybody. 
yeah. problems yeah. and that his style you have to look at like it's it's aptitude in learning and Tyson Fury is a very learned professional fighter do you understand mm -hmm. his IQ is above mm. any other heavyweight in the world today and that's no disrespect to Andy Joshua's still learning do you understand mm. but Tyson Fury is 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 entrenched in his in his DNA that his dad was a fighter, he's been around it, you know, he's from the traveling community. They're different. So boxing's inside of him, it's, it's edged inside of him. So that guy will give him problems. I don't think David Hay, David Hay of maybe 2008, maybe, yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe so. But we're not dealing with the David Hay of 2008 no more. No, so no. David, David Hay's 37 years old. Uh, Fraser, how well do you think Joe Joyce can do? And would you like to fight him again in the future as a pro? That's from Jez Bachelor. Jez Bachelor. Joe Joyce, you know, I know Joe well, and I honestly say this, and I say this with people look at me sometimes and think, are you, are you serious? I think Joe can go all the way, you know. Honest to God, he is. You're not, not the first person to sit there Robert and say McCracken that. Robert McCracken said the same thing. And even that, David Allen, who's done loads right. of rounds with him, sat in that very seat about a month ago and said exactly the same. You know why? Because, let's make no mistake about it, you ain't going to have too many kids sitting, sitting at home thinking, I want to box like him. I, I want to fight just like him, not like they do with AJ. Well, and effective. Everyone. But what he does is so hard to, to, you know. I've been in the ring with him four times, four, well, four bouts with him. I've been in the ring with him a hundred times, four bouts. I've never had my hands raised. I consider myself a good fighter, mm. and for me to get in there four times with someone, and not beat him, I've never. That's never happened to me with anyone in the world. And I've boxed all over the world, all different styles. He's the real deal. Strong, fit, fast, and. What he's not being given credit for is he's gone away as a professional and he's he's trying to learn new things. He's training with um, is it it's Sal Salas, Salas? Yeah. and Salas and he's uh, he's picking up new things. Like even I seen him in his um, his last fight. He's trying new things all the time. So he, he like I say, it's not pretty, but it's effective. You try and stop that when you've got a heavyweight who's fit, strong, and a granite chin in front of him. He's a difficult person, to, you know, to beat. So I think Joe can go all the way, um, and I think eventually. You know, the big fighters will come for him and it's going to be interesting. Let's clip that up because that'll be the answer we use for the promo for your fight uh, <laughs> when you fight him. Um, Thomas Lyons, Spencer said, just been announced that um, Joyce is fighting Lenroy Thomas for the Commonwealth title. If Joe wins, would it be a huge statement after only four fights? It would be a huge statement after ten fights. Just, let me just say, and, and, and seriously, Lenroy, Lenroy Thomas will get beat by Joe Joyce. Yeah, I'm just yeah. telling you this now. Mm. Uh, he, he styles all wrong for him. Joe Joyce is a persistent. He just, do you know what I mean? He's, he's, sometimes he seems mechanical, but he's more athletic than given credit for. Oh. That, you know, seriously, that Joe will march this guy down and beat this guy, and, and allegedly he's meant to be on uh, the David A. undercard, right? Mm -hmm. right? So if it is, if that does, listen, a massive statement, but you can also see the blueprint of where um, where his management team coming to, because David Hay was a guy like, yeah. When David Hay was fighting with Adam Booth, Adam Booth kind of fast tracked him, and he's doing the same thing. Which he's saying, listen, yeah, we can take care of this guy. Stay away from this guy, but we can take care of this guy. And he's ranked above this guy. Mm. Let's fight him, and and I think that's excellent because you know what, the game needs a bit of the sexiness, and uh, that, I think he's going to bring it. And I think Joe is one of them fighters where people are going to love to learn uh, learn to love him because it's it's not perfect. He is going to get hit. It's mm. going to be exciting. He's a, he's a heavyweight, and like I say, when it comes to athletic, this guy, this this is a six foot six, 18 stone man that can do a backflip and yeah. non handed cartwheel. Athletic, he's, he can well, do it. He's, he's a ninja. He's a ninja he can do everything. Yeah. And let me tell you, this guy can do everything, so yeah. he's going to be exciting to watch. Last one to both of you, you can both have a stab at it. How tough a fight do you think Carl Frampton has on Saturday night? Is he too quick and strong for Nonito Donair? You, on, no, no, you, you met, you met, you yeah, met Donny Todd in his house. Yeah, you knocked fan. on his door. Yeah, he fan. brought you in. He had That's dinner story, and everything. Yeah. Nice and he yeah. says, "He's telling me." Well, <laughs> still but no, I'm sitting. This is me. That's why I sit very low. Right, no, no, I'm just being real. Donny Todd in is a past peak champion. Is or was? Yeah. Right, right. He's a past peak. He he was a very very in his day. He was he was excellent. But his days past. And, and I have to just be realistic. But if you fancy it, I believe that he could give trouble. But I'm seeing Carl Frampton do things now. And it always takes, like, what's this, his third fight now with Jamie Moore? Second. I believe second. second fight. Right, second fight with Jamie Moore. He's only going to improve. I think Jamie Moore is a very, very good, um, learned man who, who studies the game. And I can see how these these two guys had a gel. I think it's an excellent combination. So I, I can't see Nonito Dene giving him any trouble. I think Carl Frampton will go through him. I really rate Carl. He's an excellent fighter. Yeah, I think, I think Carl's getting better. And, um, I used to watch him as an amateur, and he had a proper, exciting style. Mm. And even through all the pros, he's, you know, he's been good to watch. I'm a massive, massive fan. 
Um, I think his youth, his explosiveness, and the fact that he's hungry, I think he's wanting to go to you know to the top of the mountain again. When I've seen a few of these interviews with Nanita Donaire, I'm not sure he's got that same hunger as he once had. So I'm going to go for Frampton, and I, I think he's got to get out there and set a bite him straight away and let him know, you know, I'm I'm moving on with my career and I'm trying to finish yours. Brilliant. Well, well said. Best of luck to the Jackal out in Belfast at the weekend. I'm going to return this gold medal to yeah. you, Fraser. Thank you so much for coming in. I can confirm it's not a chocolate one. It is the real okay, one. I'll pass it over. <laughs> yeah, this I'll is down to the pawn shop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what what gold medal? Um, you're going to stay with us for the whole podcast, so make sure you uh, join in later and uh, catch uh, all of that. I think it's going to be a good one, but thank you very much for joining us. Sky Sports. Feel it all.